His friends abandoned him for being weak, but he's a god who hides his power. Yagiri is a stupid pathetic loser child walking in a corridor filled with corpses and bullets flying in all directions. He walks towards a camera and asks where Asako is, his caretaker. He continues walking towards a room and the door suddenly opens. A woman is wielding a gun as she holds Asako hostage. Asako asks the woman what she wants, but the woman tells her to shut up. Yagiri happily runs inside the room, happy to find Asako. The woman tells Yagiri to not move, otherwise, she will blast Asako's brains out. Asako complains about being hurt, and in the next second something happens. Some waves appear and the woman drops dead to the floor. Asako is confused, but Yagiri simply hugs her and smiles while saying they should return. Suddenly, an older Yagiri is awoken from his sleep by his classmate Tamachika who seems to be in a panic. He opens his eyes, asking who she is, but quickly remembers she's the girl with the weird name. He remembers that before taking a nap they were on a class trip and asked if they already arrived. However, Tomachikar replies they haven't, and tells him to wake up and see what's going on. Yagiri looks around and sees several of his classmates, lifeless in their pools of sauce. He notices that one of them is pierced by something strange and asks what it is. He decides to look outside the bus and notices something wrapping around it. He thinks it could be a giant snake or a lizard. To figure it out, he grabs a random mic on the floor and throws it against the pierced guy. Turns out the dead cannot fight you back, but the thing that pierced him starts moving. Yagiri turns its attention outside the bus again and realizes the thing is a huge wyvern. The monster flies up and decides to charge at the bus while preparing to breathe fire. Suddenly, Tomachika hugs him in despair. That moment rewires Yagiri's brain. The sensation of a plot-filled girl holding onto his arm changes his mind. He focuses his mind on opening a door and says one word, die. In the next second, the wyvern suddenly collapses onto the floor. Yagiri tells Tomachika that they're safe, but she's confused and asks about what's going on. Yagiri pulls out his console while telling her to calm down and tell him what happened. He started playing a video game, but she got mad, mentioning this was not the time to play games. After watching him play for a bit, she simply tells him that he's trash in video games and starts giving him tips. But she quickly realizes about their situation and tells it's not the time. He asks if she's feeling better, and she confirms. He tells her to start explaining how they got into this situation. Tomachika reveals their bus was driving casually through the night. However, after passing past a tunnel they found themselves in this strange field. Everyone was confused and she even asked her friend if the outside was always like that. However, her friend couldn't answer. Suddenly a girl entered the bus and greeted everyone inside. She introduced herself as Sion, the granddaughter of the Great Sage. Their teacher got up to complain, but the girl simply popped his head right away. The girl then acted like nothing, telling the kids to calm down and pay attention without doing anything stupid. Everyone froze in shock as the girl told them not to annoy her, otherwise, everyone would meet the same fate. She explains to them that her power level is 530,000. She then pops up the driver's head, mentioning that was a joke and she expected them to laugh. She knows this isn't unfair, but that's how it works in a different world. She decides to then explain this whole thing to the students. She summoned everyone here because she's looking for sage candidates. She reveals this world is ruled by sages and their numbers are quite low. Therefore, she summoned them as a way to get new personnel. She points out her hand forward while casting some magic. Tomachika thought everyone was going to get blasted and closed her eyes. But when she opened, she saw several students glowing. However, she was one of the few who didn't glow. Sion then reveals she installed Battlesong version in all of the glowing students and they should see some logos on the screen. Tomachika is confused and asks her friend if she can see anything. Her friend uses her fingers to touch some air, explaining she sees some colorful letters saying status. Sion then reveals this system can only be used in this world and is called the gift and everyone must use it to try and become sages within the next month. Tomachika raises her hand to ask a question. She claims that she didn't glow or see any of the logos. Sion simply replies that some people are not compatible, and that she should deal with it. Tomachika gets shocked, especially when Sion reveals that if nobody becomes a sage, they will all become livestock to produce magical energy. Sion then explains their first mission will start in an hour, and they should try to not get wiped out right away. She then walks away, and Tomachika sits down revealing that she doesn't understand anything. Her friend mentions there are some details regarding their mission on their screen. Turns out their job is to escape from the incoming dragon. Tomachika doesn't believe something like that exists. However, Yazaki, one of the guys tries to act like a leader. He claims they should try to clear the mission and how they all need to work together. 
and for that reason, they need to talk about their strengths and weakness. Everyone writes their name and stats on pieces of paper, but Tomachika realizes that there are four students, including her, who didn't glow. However, one of them is Yagiri, who's sleeping, cause who cares? They all complain about his carefree sleepy time, until they notice everyone else stepping outside the bus. They also decide to go outside, but Tomachika stays behind to wake Yagiri up. The other girl tries to convince her to leave him behind, but they suddenly hear two guys arguing. Turns out, Yazaki won't let the four come with them. The delinquent complains, but Yazaki tells him to shut up because his class is the general. He decides to turn into a douche, breaking the bus chairs, and explains that this is the power of a gift. He's only level one, but he's way stronger than those four pleb humans. The other girl tells Yazaki that if he's strong, they should protect them. However, Yazaki replies this is part of the plan. Everyone is confused, and he tells the girl by his side to use his gift. She activates her charm ability, which doesn't affect anyone. Yazaki walks away, explaining this skill makes her popular with monsters. In short, there's a nearby dragon around, and by using that skill on them, the dragon will attack them, while giving the rest a chance to escape. And this was a decision that everyone with gifts made. Tomachika cannot believe that her friend would betray her, but Yazaki reveals she actually did. But Tomachika knows that Yazki must have forced her. Yazaki then steps outside and locks the door. They try to open it out for a while when they suddenly hear a noise outside. Tomachika thinks it's a dragon when suddenly, something crashes against the bus. The guy freaks out, and Tomachika notices the other taken out. After explaining the whole thing, Yogiri realizes there's a big problem. He has no way to recharge his console in this world. He then gets up, mentioning that according to Yazaki it's now safe outside. Tomachika asks if Yogiri did something, but he replies the dragon crashed onto the floor and died. She knows it's a life, but they decide to get out through the window. Upon checking the surroundings, Yogiri notices they can go to the hills, city, or forest. Tomachika then points out that something is flying in the sky. After observing, she realizes it's three of their classmates. Yogiri is impressed by her sight at long range and asks if he should kill them. She asks what's what is wrong with his mind. But Yogiri simply replies they left them behind to die. Tomachika says he shouldn't talk about killing them. Yogiri answers that they could be hostile toward them. She's confused, but the guys start getting closer, also confused because the dragon is dead. One of them notices that Tomachika is still alive, and complains that he was planning to turn her corpse into a zombie so that he could go wild. Yes, that type of wild. The guys talk between themselves, complaining about turning a corpse into a zombie and using her is weird. Hearing those words, Tomachika realizes they clearly cannot be friends. Suddenly, one of the guys casts a huge fireball that barely misses Tomachika. The guys keep talking between themselves how about they refine their magic and how one of them is a healer, the other a hero, and the last a necromancer. The guy who casts the fireball then tells Tomachika to come to his side without resisting. She's confused about his request, but the three simply reveal they want to spend their fun time with her. Tomachika realizes they're all after her body. Yogiri is impressed that she has the guts to say that in that situation. The necromancer guy complains she and Yogiri seem too close, but Yogiri simply says he will manage even the conversation. He points at the fireball guy and tells him to die. The other two laugh it out but get shocked to see the guy randomly hug the floor. They ask what happened and Yogiri replies he simply ordered him to die. He tells them to not move, but the necromancer tries to check on his friend. Yogiri tells him to die as well. Only Fatso remains, and Yogiri says that if he moves, he will die. Yogiri promises to explain his ability and tells Fatso to check if the other two are truly dead. Fatso complies and uses his healing ability, mentioning he can cure anything in an instant. However, his friends don't move. Tomachika realizes that Yogiri is the one who killed the dragon, but he simply didn't want to explain what happened. She gets mad at those words, but Yogiri explains that Fatso is dumb, so he needs to explain in detail to him instead of her. Fatso complains that Yogiri went too far, but our boy simply explains he only did it because they tried to attack him. He then explains that his ability is called instant death to any target. In fact, he doesn't need to tell people to die, he just needs to think about it. Fatso says that's impossible, but Yogiri would love to test the theory. Fatso accepts defeat and tries to get close to Yogiri pretending to be scared, but he's preparing to attack him with a magic attack, however, Yogiri simply tells him to stop. Fatso is confused and Yogiri explains that he also has an ability that allows him to know if someone has the intent to kill him or not, and to make it worse, he can combine the two abilities. In short, he doesn't need to know who's trying to kill him, 
Fatso gives up in tears and Yagiri asks why they're so cocky so early after getting those skills. Fatso then reveals this is the second time the three of them came to this world. They defeated the demon world and returned to their world. Yagiri asks Tomachika if the three missed any classes, and she replies they didn't. Fatso reveals that when they returned home, only some hours had passed. Yagiri decides to kill him, but Fatso asks Tomachika to help him. Tomachika replies she is only alive because Yagiri saved her, therefore he should deal with it. Fatso calls her cold and pulls out an item, promising that if she puts it on him, she will become her servant. In short, it's a slave collar, and he puts it on himself. He acts like a pervert while walking toward her, but she tells him to stop. The caller starts strangling him, and she asks if there's a way to stop being his master. Fatso obeys the order, mentioning that she can transfer it to another person. She does it, transferring to Yagiri, who decides to not kill him. Instead, Fatso should head to the forest full of monsters and wait there. But before leaving, Fatso should leave all his items, and never tell anyone about the Yagiri and Tomachika. Fatso obeys orders, and Tomachika asks if this is okay. Yagiri replies that Fatso will always betray them, therefore it's better this way. She then asks if he isn't suspicious that she might turn him in. Yagiri simply replies it is what it is, after all, he's the one who decided to protect her. She blushes mentioning she doesn't know how to reply, and that they never spoke much before. She asks why he decided to protect her. Yagiri initially replies he doesn't know why, but after Tomachika's insistence, he admits it was all because of her soft and juicy developed plot. She blushes and gets angry, complaining that men are all the same. Meanwhile, Sion is in bed doing whatever is that. A guy comes to report, mentioning that the first mission was cleared with four casualties, two with no ability, and two S ranks. He mentions the S ranks died instantly without warning and thinks it's an instant death magic. However, she returns the possibility and returns to bed. Yogiri and Tamachika manage to reach the nearby city. Tamachika is happy about it, but Yogiri is feeling sleepy. They notice the guards closing on the gate and rush out to them. However, they cannot understand what the guards are saying. Still, they order them to wait until they call their lord. The lord appears, mentioning that this situation is annoying, and asks if they got separated from the guys that came at noon. Tamachika gets happy as the guy can speak Japanese. However, Yogiri simply asks if the guy can let them in as they're trying to catch up with their colleagues. The guy gets annoyed, mentioning that usually people need to pay to get inside. However, he has orders to not get in the way of sage candidates. Yogiri then mentions his colleagues talking about heading to the capital and how they can get there. However, this ugly face simply tells that he won't get in their way or help them at all. Yogiri thanks him nevertheless and decides to leave however, this trash-faced dude says that he wants Tamachika to spend the night in his house. She immediately rejects him and pulls Yogiri as she walks away. Upon getting inside the city, Yogiri asks why she ran. She replies that she was afraid that Yogiri was about to kill him. Yogiri gets confused and asks if she thinks he's a serial killer. However, she replies that she's surprised that he hasn't noticed that. Upon looking around, Tamachika gets excited because it looks like a fantasy city filled with beast folk. A fox girl named Myriu then approaches them, asking if they are sage candidates. She asks if they are lost as it seems like it's their first time in the city. Tamachika gets hyped to see some cat ears, but Yogiri asks what she wants. The cat girl explains she wants to help them for free. The two get confused and ask why she would do that. Myriu explains she wants to get along with the sage candidate boys for two reasons. First, they have a guaranteed future, and second, they're easy to seduce. Tamachika thinks this girl has no salvation, but Myriu replies she doesn't want to seduce her boyfriend. She believes that the secret to building a great relationship comes from friendship. Tomochika explains they're not a couple, but Yogiri wants to know her opinion about their situation. She answers that she wants to look around the city before it gets dark. Since that's her goal, Yogiri asks Myriu to show them around. After Tomochika's shopping spree, she reveals that she never expected to wear this new type of clothes so casually. However, she's so blind that she doesn't notice that they're currently surrounded. Yogiri reveals that he was expecting to end up in this situation. Tamachika apologizes, mentioning that she wanted to follow Myriu because she looked kind. The bandits start their treats, but Yogiri protects the girl while asking if they want money. The bandits reveal they do want money, but their main goal is to get talentless sage candidates. He explains those who possess gifts usually go rampage in their city, everyone hates them, but they cannot do anything to them. However, sage candidates who have no gifts are perfect to beat up and sell. 
Kamachika starts to freak out, but our Sigma Yogiri is still chilling. He replies that he understands the deal, but asks permission to kill the bandits. The bandits mock, explaining they will be the ones who will be killing them. Tamachika tries to warn Mairyu up, explaining that Yogiri is actually strong despite his looks. However, this stupid cat girl thinks this is all a bluff because two people without a sage gift are as useless as you in real life. Yet, Yogiri pulls his verbal death note and orders everyone behind him to die. In an instant, everyone is down. The rest of the bandits get confused, but Yogiri continues his task, ordering the leopard dude to half die. However, the guy collapses and Yogiri realizes that it's impossible to be half dead. He decides to try something new and points at the KFC's ankle, ordering it to die. The guy collapses, but Yogiri thinks this was a mistake. He points at this bear dude's shoulder and orders it to die. The guy goes to the next world as well and Tamachika says that Yogiri is so harsh. He reveals that he tried to go easy on them and orders this dog's eyeballs to die. The guy becomes blind, shocking everyone. Yogiri continues his onslaught, forcing Mairyu to ask who he is. Yogiri doesn't reply, thinking that it's not efficient to kill individual body parts. Mairyu tries to play the victim, asking for help as her little brothers are waiting for her to go home. Yet Yogiri simply replies that's not a reason to steal and kill people. The last guy asks if he isn't talentless, but Yogiri points his finger at them and tells them to die. However, it doesn't work. They are still alive and try to run away, Tamachika asks if he is letting them go. But Yogiri replies he didn't, he simply delayed his order. The two bandits manage to hide themselves, but the death is activated. Yogiri tells Tamachika it's time to leave, but they're stopped by some guards who want to know about the situation. Yogiri lies and explains they got lost and found everyone dead on the floor. One of the guards reveals that's a lie because she saw everyone fall out of nowhere when they were about to attack the two. Tamachika gets angry because this clearly means the guards were watching but didn't help them. The guard explains they wanted to destroy the bandit's backer as well. Yogiri understands the guards wanted to let them get sold and then track the people who bought them. The guard confirms it and tells them that Yogiri cannot do anything to them because they're protected against gifts. However, one of the guards uses his appraisal skill and reveals that neither Yogiri nor Tamachika have gifts. The girl is shocked, but that clearly means they cannot do anything to the two because they have no powers. The guy apologizes because his captain is as rude as your everyday Karen, but Yogiri doesn't mind. He asks the dude if he knows a place where they could stay the night. They take them to a huge inn mansion, which shocks Tamachika as she thinks it's a castle. Yogiri asks if she's fine with sharing a room with him to save some cash, but she's shy about it. He then decides to ask for rooms next to each other. Upon getting inside her room, Tamachika gets happy because it's big but questions Yogiri's true intentions when he asked if she wanted to share a room. She then thinks about the current situation and wonders if he likes her. However, she quickly remembers that all he cares is about her juicy fluffy plot. Suddenly, she looks forward and sees a spirit in the air. She notices how it resembles her older sister and asks how she got into this world. However, the spirit tells her they're different and introduces herself as Makamoko, her ancestor and guardian spirit. Tamachika is confused about the last part and the spirit reveals that she appeared to help her in this emergency. Tamachika asks why now and not earlier. However, the spirit reveals that she was afraid that Yogiri might erase her. Tamachika is surprised that his ability works in spirits. The spirit begs Tamachika to talk to him about her. This way he won't hurt her. She accepts and asks about the spirit coming here to help her. In short, the spirit reveals that it can protect her from anything but physical attacks. She also reveals the reason why Tamachika doesn't have a gift. It's because she protected her. Tamachika gets angry and asks her why, but the spirit reveals it was dangerous. The spirit then reveals that gifts have advantages however, they also allow Sion to control her life. Tamachika the other three were also being protected by spirits, but her ancestor doesn't know about it. Still, the spirit is happy because she finally has a successor for her school of archery. However, Tamachika ignores her mentioning that she wants to return to her world, but she can only rely on Yogiri for the moment. The spirit gets excited, mentioning that's the reason why I teach her the true martial arts. The next morning, Yogiri notices that she seems tired. She reveals it's all due to the recent events and asks if they will catch up with the others. Yogiri explains that he met Celestina, one of the inn staff, and had her look for the other's location, prepare language translation, and some concealment items. 
Not only that, but Celestina created something that will enable him to charge up his console. Celestina hands them some tickets to leave the city, and Yogiri asks her to keep all the items he has. The two later depart on a train, and Tamachika's ancestor is still scared of Yogiri. Tamachika asks if he can see her ancestor to which he reveals that he only saw her from the moment Tamachika talked about it. Tamachika then sits by his side and asks if they will be able to meet their colleagues. Yugiri replies that according to Celestina, their mates should be moving around the primeval forest to train. Suddenly, he turns to her and pushes her down. A huge explosion blows the ceiling away, confusing her. Meanwhile, in the previous city, the guards are trying to interrogate the dog who was blinded by Yogiri. The guy won't talk, and they explain that healing magic doesn't work. There's a sage woman named Lane finds it interesting, and pulls out one of the dog's eyes. She casts her healing magic to reconstruct the whole eye, but the dog still cannot see. She finds it more interesting and decides to reveal herself as a vampire. She bites the guy to transform the guy to increase his abilities and heal him. But the guy is still blind. Suddenly, the building starts to shake and a guy known as the hero appears inside. The hero attacks Lane with several slashes, but she only complains that she likes her dress. The guards are confused because she took not damage, but in reality, she just healed instantly. The hero throws his sword at the floor and Lane asks, why is he attacking her when he should be dealing with the demon lord? The hero calls her a tyrant and prepares an attack. He explodes the whole building and is happy that he finally managed to kill a sage for Ariel. However, Lane is still alive and asks if Ariel is his lover. The hero is shocked and cannot believe that Lane managed to avoid the attack. Lane, however, explains that she didn't move at all because she cannot die. The hero is confused because his attack should have deleted her, but she only thinks that would be great if that was possible. In the end, the hero begs to be killed, but she simply throws him off the building. Back on the train, a message orders the passengers to stay put as there's a sage fighting an aggressor. Yugiri thinks they're safe as nobody is after them, but Tamachika doesn't know what's going on. They look around and see a huge mecha robot, which Yogiri realizes is the aggressor. Tamachika uses her amazing sight to tell him the sage is floating. The sage launches several attacks at the robot, but their battle is pretty even. Destroying mountains during fights, it's pretty common. Tamachika asks if Yogiri can get rid of those too, but he asks her why should he do it. She claims they're on their way, but Yogiri explains that's stupid because he could use that same reason to kill everyone who walks in front of him. She tries to explain that they could have died just now, but Yogiri says they aren't targeting them. He reveals that he has some rules to use his power otherwise, he would simply kill everyone who annoys him. She apologizes for being naive when suddenly there's a huge attack coming in their way. Luckily, the robot takes the attack. The sage complains the robot is moving and attacks with a huge ice spell. The passengers get frozen, but Yogiri manages to protect Tamachika. Tamachika calls the sage cruel, but he gets annoyed. Yogiri asks why did he attack them, but the sage tells him to kneel down and praise him like a dog. He starts insulting Yogiri, but Yogiri insults him back and thinks about killing him. The sage falls flat on the floor and Tamachika asks if he did it. He simply replies he had a good enough reason to do it. The robot approaches them, but reveals that he has no intention to fight. The robot wants to negotiate with Yogiri, promising to give him anything he wants. Tamachika realizes the robot is afraid of Yogiri, but our boy asks if there's a way to return to their world. The robot mentions he knows a way to return to the world where he came from, not where they came. Yogiri asks if the robot can take them there, but the robot refuses because his entire being is not in this world. Plus, the robot refuses to bring someone as dangerous as Yogiri to his world. He then explains that this world is at one of the lowest levels and climbing up requires a huge amount of energy and the right coordinates. Yogiri then asks the robot to give him advice on how to find the energy and coordinates to return to his world. He then asks if Tamachika wants something, but her spirit interrupts. Later that day, the guards find out the sage that was defeated by Yogiri. Sion also finds out about them while talking with Lane and finds it curious they managed to kill a sage. Lane is interested in Yogiri's instant death ability, but Sion reveals that the sage is supposed to have instant death resistance. Sion then leaves and Lane tells her subordinate to head to Hanabusa City and find out Yogiri and Tamachika. Meanwhile, the two rest for the night in the woods where Tamachika's ancestor reveals that she turned her underwear into a katana. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.